uh, thanks, John. Thanks everybody for getting on here uh, uh, midday on Saturday or early in the morning for, for our friends uh, in Japan. Appreciate it. Uh, as John mentioned, we're, we called this today to welcome Kohei Arihara uh, and his wife to, to the Rangers and to the Rangers family. We're excited to have them, uh, excited and, and looking forward to seeing Kohei compete and, uh, and help improve the, uh, our team on the field. Um, uh, you know, Kohei is a young, durable uh, starting pitcher with a successful track record. Um, uh, he throws seven pitches for strikes. Our staff believes that there's additional opportunities for him to continue to improve. And, and what stood out to us in, in this process was just his curiosity uh, and his desire to uh, continue to develop as a pitcher and as a professional. And that, that's exciting to us. I want to thank you. Uh, excuse me. I want to recognize and thank uh, the Hokkaido Club, uh, namely Yoshimura-san, uh, Kuriyama-san, and uh, Iwamoto-san. Uh, they we obviously have a, a working relationship with them. Um, have uh, befriended these gentlemen uh, over the years. Uh, to a mutually beneficial relationship, and uh, knowing that uh, Arihara has has been training with them and developing with them gives us an added level of, of comfort in, in this uh, acquisition. I also want to recognize and thank our, uh, our uh, Japanese staff, uh, Joe Furukawa and, and Hajime Watabe, uh, for their uh, excellent work and, and um, the background, of not just this past year, when obviously the, the pandemic limited our ability to go scout them, but over the years and um, you know, puts us in a very good position. So. Very excited to have uh, Kohei here with us and, and looking forward to, uh, to watching him develop and watching him compete. Okay, and with that, we will open it up to questions. So please raise your hands and I will call on you again for the Japanese media. You can ask Joe questions in Japanese and we will uh, interpret the question and answers. So with that, let's go to Evan Grant. Uh, hi, um, I, I don't know John or Chris uh, Young who wants to handle this, but simply from a um, kind of a practical point of view, uh, you know, one thing that Kohei did the last two years was pitch a significant number of innings. And, and JD, you mentioned the word durable. Uh, given where this team is and, and, and what you most needed, how, how did he particularly dovetail into what you needed? You want to take that, CY? Yeah, I'll take that, JD. Thanks, Evan. Uh, yeah, Evan, I think you highlighted exactly what we are excited about is that the durability, the fact that he threw 130 something innings last season. Um, you know, this is a pitcher who is going to come in and give us valuable quality innings. And I think that any starting rotation needs that. Certainly, we're looking forward to that. And that's our expectation in signing him. Uh, we do think that there's upside here in terms of uh, his curiosity and willingness to learn and improve. But um, certainly, the, the durability uh, component is a very appealing aspect to the signing. Chris, from, from this perspective, you know, nobody in the major leagues threw more than 94 innings last year, playoffs included. To have a guy come in who, who did throw 130 innings um, in 2020, uh, how, how prepared is a guy like that going to be to hit the ground for a team that really does need innings from, from somebody in the rotation? Yeah, I think just given the track record, Evan, and the fact that he's done this over the last few seasons and, uh, and certainly through, like I said, 132 innings last season, uh, he should be prepared to, to really stabilize the rotation and help provide valuable innings. Uh, you know, we're hopeful it'll be 150 plus in a season that is still to be determined. We don't know what to expect quite yet, but certainly having someone who can fill innings is a high priority for us. And then just last thing for me, both of you guys mentioned the idea of, of being curious and, and wanting to continue to learn. Um, was there something in your conversations with Kohei that kind of highlighted that? Um, you know, I think that just for him showing the willingness to work with our pitching coaches, uh, Doug Mathis and Brennan Segarra, um, saying that he hopes to continue to improve to get better. He's 28 years old and uh, still feels like he wants to learn more about what makes him successful, how to become a better pitcher. Uh, that type of curiosity is part of being a competitor. It's, it's never being satisfied or complacent. Certainly fits what we are looking for in our players, and uh, we're very excited about that. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll go to T.R. Sullivan. Go ahead, T.R. 
uh, Joe Furukawa, could you please, sir, describe um, Kohei's pitching repertoire and pitching style, please, sir? Yeah, yeah. So he's, uh, you know, for, for me, he's uh, <clears throat> he's the type of guy who could throw a, a lot of different pitches uh, for strikes. Uh, he doesn't have a set pattern. Um, you know, he's got a very good feel to uh, to manipulate each of the each of his different pitches. Um, you know, and like I said, he has a, he has no set set patterns. Uh, he always seems to be a, a step ahead of the hitters. Um, he pitches to contact. He gets ground balls. He he gets strikeouts when he needs. Uh, so overall, he's a very uh, you know he's a <clears throat> starter uh, who could throw a lot of innings. Durable. He's got the pitchability. To me, he's you know he's got <clears throat> he's got the full package. You somebody mentioned that he throws seven pitches, and of course we all know Darvish had a wide assortment of pitches too, but he's not. He's not as overpowering as Darvish is, correct? Yes, correct. He's more of a he's more of a uh, I don't know, I don't want to say finesse pitcher because he strikes out a lot of batters, but he's more on that side, I would think. Yes, yes, yeah. He does uh, uh, it, it, <clears throat> a lot of things are similar with Darvish, but in that aspect, so yeah, there's uh, there's several things. That, I mean, he's not uh, he's not the type uh, like a Darvish. He's more of a command, uh, like I, like he can still throw strikeouts, but he's more of a command uh, pitch ability, pitch to contact type of guy. Okay, one qu quick question for John Daniels. Despite, I know your re relationship with Hokkaido, but the player had the final decision on where he was going to play next year, correct? The, how did that all work out? Yeah, the, the um, our relationship with the fighters uh, did not – um, you know, th this was the player's decision uh, under this posting system. Um, you know, it's kind of a set uh, percentage of the contract that goes to the to the uh, Japanese club. And so, um, uh, you know, we uh, we had a Zoom call with with um, uh, Kohei and and uh, some members of, of his group. Um, kind of talked about uh, what he was on there and, and talked about our, our plans, our thoughts. Uh, we were able to answer some questions, uh, and vice versa. We were able to ask him some. Uh, and then we had uh, some negotiations with his agent at Wasserman, Joel Wolf, um, that concluded on Tuesday. Um, and and uh, he agreed to terms uh, basically Tuesday night. Flew into Texas on Wednesday, had his physical on Thursday. So uh, that was kind of the process we went through. Thank you, John Daniels. Thank you, John Blake. Go to Jeff Wilson. Hey, Joe. Um, so he says he can be better. So how can he be better? How does he get better? Uh, I think that's, uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, you know, just like uh, what Chris said, he's still uh, 28 years old. And um, he still has... I mean, I don't think he still feels like he reached his ceiling. Um, you know, he pitched, he had a very good year in 2019. Uh, I, mean, I think he wants to repeat that. He wants to get better. Um, and then I think, you know, our R&D people uh, and, and, and Brendan, our pitching coach, um, you know, they've seen a lot of videos on him. And there's a lot of different ways that, you know, he could uh, <clears throat> improve on, uh, on certain pitches. Um, the uses of his pitches. So I, I think it's just like like what Chris said with the, with every pitcher who always uh, you know has a uh, as, as a competitor who wants to always get better. Um, I mean those are those are things that you know you, you might not ever figure it out, but you always have room room to get better. And uh, Arihara is open to that. Okay. Hey, uh, John Daniels, or and Joe, you can answer this too. Uh, Hokkaido, they had spring training in Surprise for how many years now? Do you know, John? Joe, remind me, is it two years? Uh, it, it's spring training in where? In, in Arizona. It was in, yeah, it was uh, in uh, Peoria, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, they've had it for several years, several okay. years now, yeah. Okay, so is there a comfort factor that has 
that maybe played into this? Did he did he mention that at all? He's not going into a completely um, foreign uh, situation. He at least has a some mod, some modicum of a sense of where he'll be for at least part of the year. I don't, I don't want to personally speculate on that, Joe. I mean, I'm sure it helps somewhat uh, having you know been to the states from a you know cultural standpoint, but. I, there, there's still a, uh, a pretty significant, um, you know, transition that, that any athletes can have to make or any persons you have to make changing uh, countries and, and uh, you know, uh, cultures and travel patterns and all that sort of thing, food, et cetera. So, you know, we, we will do our best to, uh, as we have in the past to make that transition as or easy as we can on them. And uh, I did I just got a note here. It's, I think four years to answer your previous question, Jeff. It, uh, the fighters trained two years in Scottsdale and then two years in Peoria. Okay. Uh, and then just one more thing. What, what's the ball situation in Japan? Have they gone to one ball and has, has uh, Kohei been, have any experience with the major league ball? Joe, you can answer if you don't mind on the, uh, the Japanese baseball. Yes. Yes. No, I, I, uh, the, Japan, uh, there's we're using one ball in the NPB. Um, it's been it's been a while. It's been several years back when uh, each team or each uh, home team got to choose to uh, choose which balls to use. But it's been um, it's been the same balls for s several years now. And and regarding Arihara with the with the Major League Baseball, um, I, I, I'm not sure, uh, but I, I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm assuming that's the, you know, he's going to, he's going to use the MLB baseball during the off season to try to get used to it as soon as possible. All right. Thanks guys. When he was here this week, Jeff, we, uh, we were able to give him some baseballs to take back to, to practice with before he comes back for spring training. Okay, great. Okay. We will go to CJ Nitkowski. Uh, see, well, I want to ask you this one. I know I probably only have been able to see him on video. Uh, but we saw the tweet with the seven pitches. Uh, I'm curious for you, is there anything that sticks out among that group that you say, you know what, these are probably his best two or three, or we could see where he falls into this kind of pattern based on his repertoire? Yeah, CJ, great question. I think his seeker has great late movement. I think it's a really good pitch for him. Um, and then the other two pitches that we really like have been his slider and his split. Um, his split is something we think will play really, really well here. We think it complements his sinker. And uh, certainly as we kind of uh, get our hands on him, kind of get used to the player, watch him, uh, we expect that we'll be able to sort of utilize those pitches and, and hone in on the patterns, the tunneling, and uh, everything to uh, try to increase, increase either the usage of those pitches or how they complement each other uh, to, to give him the best chance of success. Thank you. And, J.D., you've been through this before. I'm curious if you guys have come up with – uh, a theory uh, when it comes to swings and misses for these guys, right? We saw uh, we saw Tanaka kind of hold his same numbers. What he did in Japan, he did exactly that in the States. We've seen Maeda and we've seen Darvish see an increase in their strikeouts. Uh, when you look at the situation now here um, with him, with Ari Hara, do we think or do you think um, that you're going to see a, a bump in strikeouts? Should they be about the same? Are you able to anticipate based on the history of, of some of the Japanese pitchers that have come over? Yeah, like you said, I think it's about the individual and then also what those guys do uh, when they've come over as far as are there certain pitches that they're utilizing more or less here. Uh, you know, see what I just touched on. We think some of his off-speed pitches have, have more potential to get generate swing and miss here. Um, and, and there's also, I think, the offensive approach and style is, is very different here too. And so I think for a guy that's around the plate a lot, um, you know, our, our staff has identified a few things that they'd like him to emphasize maybe a little bit more, see why I touched on it a bit there. Uh, and so we think that, that the, uh, his swing and miss, his strikeout numbers, I don't ever think he's going to be a, a, an overpowering guy like Darvish. You know, it's a, it's a totally different skill set, but uh, we do think that there's uh, so there is some upside to tap into there. Thanks, JD. Woody, I don't want to leave you out, man. Uh, curious, um, you've done this with Maeda before. Uh, obviously, I think he was already established. I think he was there your second year, if I'm not mistaken, but correct me on that. But just having been through it uh, with the Japanese pitchers, is there anything you picked up on uh, during your time with him as far as the adjustment goes? 
Um, no, I don't. I, I had Iwakuma also in Seattle, so I've, I've seen a few of these guys. Um, and I think Iwakuma and, and, uh, and Maeda kind of resemble this guy more than Darvish. Um, you know, I think they're both, you know, command pitchers that, that use their pitches. And the thing that stuck out to me, and see why I hit it on earlier, is just his willingness to kind of learn and, and his willingness to try to take it to the next level. I think that was like, for me, obviously, culturally, you know, it adds a, a ton to our to our young team. And this guy's been successful in Japan. Typically, these guys come over, and like you said, it actually equates to more. Because I think the, the approach in Japan is more contact-based than here. So if we can get him to understand tunneling and, and how some of his pitches work off one another. I know Sags had mentioned using his four seam at the top of the zone. So he's got basically, like you said, seven different pitches that move all different directions. And he's got good command. So I think that's, you know, the adjustments that he's going to have to make. Um, for me, I think that the, the best thing that I saw, especially in his numbers, was that he got better as the seasons went on. He got better as games went on. He was able to make adjustments, and he even said that, you know, to us, and that kind of stuck in our in our minds a little bit, that he's not afraid to make adjustments on the fly in game, um, but also in season. So we're, we're just excited because I, we feel like there's a lot more upside. And last one for me, Woody, on that, as part of, this, as part of the sales pitch, how much did uh, the ballpark – and maybe the improved defense of the Rangers come into play as far as trying to sell him. Yeah, those were two uh, two big aspects that we had on, obviously. And um, I think the ballpark, he got to see some games there. And, um, you know, you can look at all the numbers you want, but it's just a bigger ballpark. And then our defense, our defense, you know, halfway through the year improved a lot. We're young and we're only, you know, continually – to improve it as we speak. So um, that's a big emphasis of ours. And, you know, that, that was something that we could honestly look at him in the eyes and tell him like, that's going to be our strength, you know, the ballpark and our defense. So um, I think obviously those things uh, in his mind as a pitcher, thinking those things were, were pretty good for him. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we'll go to Levi Weaver. There we go. So I, I might be out in left field here, but I, I've got a, a question about um, the Rangers sort of status in Japan. And so this is probably a, a joint question for John and Joe. Um, you know, kids growing up in the States, you've got the Dodgers and the Yankees and the Red Sox, these big name franchises. Is there anything to the theory that, you know, because of you Darvish's time here, that the Rangers have kind of maybe an elevated status in Japan, along with maybe the Mariners for Ichiro and I guess now the Angels with with Otani, is there, is there anything to that? Joe, you want to touch on that? Sure. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the Dodgers, the Yankees, Red Sox, those are the, the common name that's always going to be, you know, thrown around in Japan. Um, but I think it just as a, as a country altogether, um, you know, just with, you know, the television, internet, and just, uh, I mean, all these available ways to watch MLB baseball. I think MLB in general has been very popular. Obviously, you know, with, with Darvish in Texas, that's that's always helpful. But, um, you know, for me, um, I, I, I feel like, you know, Texas is always at, at a disadvantage, you know. It's always the West Coast or the East Coast, you know. So, I mean, that's how I look at it. But um, I think overall, uh, I mean, most of these, you know, Japanese people, I mean, they know pretty much, you know, all 30 MLB teams and they know, you know, which, uh, which Japanese players, obviously, but even some other main, uh, you know, American or Latin players on those certain teams too. So I think uh, there's more awareness about uh, it as a MLB as, as a whole in Japan. Yeah, Joe touched on something that, you know, we'll hear a lot about Levi is just, you know, the, the, the coastal cities are, are um, you know, sort of traditionally more, um, more well-known or maybe considered, you know, bigger Asian populations, um, things of that nature. Uh, certainly the DFW area's growth in that area is, has helped us. But I think the thing that we hear about the most is just uh, really from agents and, and, and from players, just, you know, our, our track record now of treating uh, players in general very well. But, um, especially players coming from other cultures where they feel comfortable here and we do you know, everything we can to support them. So that's something we take a lot of pride in and, and did hear about that here with, with Arihara that, you know, he had heard about that a little bit from Darvish, I'm sure from some other people as well that, you know, we're going to do everything we can to, to uh, you know, make it take away as many of the other hurdles uh, from an assimilation standpoint as possible. Right on. Thank you guys.
Okay, I'm going to go to Wataro, Sarazawa, Kyoto News. Go ahead, Wataro. Hey, uh, maybe, uh, think, so did, did the negotiation go purely online? Because I think uh, coming to a new country, new environment, I think a player would be, would want to know where he's going. But so was a decision made before go, actually seeing Texas and how did that impact the negotiation? Yeah, good question. I, you know, given the uh, the uh, challenges that we're all under here with with COVID and all the the uh, byproducts of that. Um, uh, Kohei did not come visit prior to agreeing. So Kohei uh, flew over and, and uh, a few days earlier and was in was in Los Angeles um, at the time of the negotiations. Uh, we did a, a Zoom call with him when he was in LA, uh, and then uh, uh, we agreed Tuesday night. Uh, we had sent him some additional information about our about the community and about our ballpark and about the team, but uh, he, he effectively agreed to to the deal uh, prior to visiting. And then he flew in the next day on Wednesday and, and uh, on Thursday was able to get a tour of the ballpark. Did he like the ballpark or did he, did he like the community actually after actually coming? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think he saw a lot of the community because I think he basically went from the, uh, the, the, uh, hot the airport to the hotel to the doctor's office, the ballpark, and then back to the, the airport. So I don't think he got a full sense of uh, of dfw in, in the area um but he he seemed very uh you know pleased with the the clubhouse and the facilities overall thank you last question um so he's back in japan now is that right and uh, i believe that's right and there's going to be a quarantine time and so he's going to probably have to stop training for a while how does that concern you and, yeah I, I think um I think given, you know, where, where everybody is right now, I, I think he'll be okay. I mean, we have some other players for different reasons that, um, you know, in the next week or, or, or two weeks or, you know, if they have family trips planned, et cetera, I, I don't think it's too unusual to have a, a, a short um, uh, disturbance in kind of your, your routine is I think if, if guys are able to get back into a routine by, you know, middle of January and, and build up, we should be fine. Thank you. Okay, we've got a couple follow-ups. Again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We have a time for a few more. Uh, we'll go back to Evan Grant. Hey, Joe. Um, appreciate you doing this in the middle of the more in the middle of the night. Um, uh, I, I had one thing I wanted to follow up on. Um, what it, it seems like maybe some things kind of of uh, either shook Arihara up in, in 18 and kind of paved the way for the big 2019 season. Can you give me a, a little bit of background on, on what adjustments or, or what changes he made? And then the second part is just, I, I, as with Darvish, I think your relationship goes back a ways with Arihara. Can you give us a little bit of background on that? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So 2018 was a uh, was a year that he struggled. Um, you know, his his command was off a little bit during that year. Uh, you know, the, the hitters were getting to his pitches, and um, and he got sent down a few times uh, during that year too. But uh, one thing he said that uh, that turned the season around or or turned himself around as a pitcher is, uh, you know, when he when he got sent down and then when he came back up, he was pitching in the relief role. I think he closed out a few games that year and just pitching in the ninth inning, um, you know, just in that, in that pressure atmosphere of trying to win the ball game in the last inning, trying to get the three outs, the importance of those three outs, the importance of each pitch to get those each outs, um, you know, where, whereas he was just used to uh, kind of pacing himself and throwing longer innings as a starter. Um, he, and he said that that was a time when, um, when he actually finally realized uh, you know, the consistency of uh, focus, concentration on each pitch. And he was able to improve that and, and take that type of mentality uh, <clears throat> when he returned as a starter. And then just your relationship and, and, and how far that goes back with him? 
Yeah. Well, uh, you know, first time I saw him was obviously was when it was in high school. Um, I saw his bullpen. I saw his games a few times when he was uh, um, a junior uh, in high school. Um, so, so, yeah, uh, 10th grade, right? Uh, uh, 10th grade or 11th grade. Um, but yeah, that, and I've been following him ever since. But um, yeah, but it's not a relationship where, you know, you know <clears throat> that, uh, uh, that we're on the phone every day or something, anything like that. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Again, if you have a question, raise your hand. We have time for a couple more. Let's go to the line of Junko Ishimura. Hi. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I wonder if you guys uh, give him a uniform number. And if so, what the number is he's going to wear? I don't think we've decided that yet. Okay. And uh, Skipper, uh, Chris, um, well, uh, how do you want him to prepare this off season? And what was your uh, first impression when you see in person with him? Um, well, my first impression, I, I didn't get to see him in, in person. Obviously it was only on a Zoom call, but uh, I was impressed. Um, I'd obviously seen a lot of a video of him, you know, saw his numbers. Um, I, I think as far as the, uh, the, the what he's going to do now, I think is, you know, typically what he would do to get ready for a season um, in Japan. Obviously we've, we've signed him to kind of stabilize a little bit of our, our rotation. You know, we know that he can, he's pitched innings. Um, that's something that nobody in, in MLB has done. So I think that's, uh, that's something that we've highlighted uh, that's intriguing to us. And um, like I said, the thing that impressed me the most was just his willingness to continue to improve. And that kind of, it, it literally falls right in line with, with what we preach as an organization, the commitment to improving every day, the work every day. And, you know, if, if he continues to do that, we feel like, like we said, that uh, he can be a, a really strong contributor to our team. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take three more. We'll go to Joe Carrillo of Dallas Sports Nation. Hey, guys, how you doing? Um, this is really for uh, maybe John or Chris uh, Woodward. Um, do you see Kohei as maybe a front end of the rotation type of pitcher? I know, you know, he's going to be here for a couple seasons, but he's a little bit different kind of pitcher than you Darvish was. And, you know, you Darvish was kind of the front end. Do you see Kohei as that type of pitcher for us? Hey, Joe, I, I think uh, I'll hit it and, then, and hand it off here, Woody. But, yeah, I mean, I think, um, like you said, this is, he's a, a different pitcher than Darvish. So, I, has other than having the same you know, club that they're coming from and in Japan, I hesitate to, to make that comparison just because, you know, Darvish is one of the best pitchers in, in the game. Um, and so, that's, that's a that's – a, a lofty comparison, but he's a, he's a different type of pitcher. Like Joe touched on, Darvish is, is you know, much more kind of power, swing and miss to his his approach. Um, uh, but I don't think the book's been written yet on on Kohei. I think you know we've touched on here a little bit. I think there's there's still more in there, and I'm excited to have our you know, Woody and our staff work with him and 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 see where his his upside truly is. Uh, we're not necessarily going to count on him to be that that front of the rotation guy, but we're not going to put any limits on him. You know, and I'll hit on that too as well. I think it's, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit uncertain. I see anybody that comes, that's never played in major league baseball. We have some comparisons, but you know, I guess I, I referenced uh, Iwakuma in Seattle. I, I saw him, you know, one of the years I was there, you know, uh, Felix Hernandez won Cy Young and I felt like Iwakuma was almost better that year. Um, and I don't know if CYU you might've been on that team, but, um, you just never know. Like, obviously, we think there's a lot of upside. And like I said, his mentality, I think, is going to allow him to achieve that upside, whatever that may be. Um, I guess it kind of remains unseen. But, uh, you know, we're excited about it because, uh, because of his willingness to kind of continue to learn and grow. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll go. We've got two more from Manalo, Manalo Hernandez Duran from Baseball Pagotas. Go ahead, Manalo. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, happy holidays for all of you. This uh, question is of, uh, combined for uh, Chris Woodward and for uh, John Daniels. Uh, Woodward, how do you see your new addition 
uh, fit into your rotation, what your rotation looks like right now. Could you talk a little bit, please, about the, your patient staff in general? And for John, please uh, uh, let us know if you plan to make uh, more additions to strengthen your patient staff. Okay, I'll hit on that. Well, our rotation, obviously, we, we lost Lance Lynn. We lost what, one of the best pitchers at baseball. But, you know, with Kyle Gibson and Jordan Lyles, we got some uh, some veteran guys at the, at the top. You know, I, th I feel like adding Kohei was, uh, was really important just from an inning standpoint because the rest of our staff is pretty young. And not just young, but, like, you know, the, they haven't thrown that many innings um, in their career. And then, obviously, last year with, with the, uh, the only the 60-game season, some of these guys didn't play a full year. So, um, I think he solidifies it. I think, you know, we're expecting him to throw some innings, get deep into, you know, deeper into some games. Um, and then really just kind of – it's hard to take the place of a Lance Lynn, but, you know, somewhat from an inning standpoint, kind of be that guy. Um, just kind of, like I said, stabilize our rotation a bit. Um, so it allows us to be creative with the rest of our uh, with the rest of our pitching staff because we're not sure, you know, with the Kobe Allers, the Taylor Hearns, the Joe Palumbo's, those guys, if they're going to be, you know, full starters or they're going to be, you know, one time through. We, we're not quite sure. We're going to try to be as creative as we can to to make them as successful as possible. Uh, sorry, I forgot the specifics of your question. I think it was about what else are we we looking to do here. Um, uh, the, with our pitching staff, it, it's still so early. I mean, I know it's crazy. It's not early in the calendar, uh, the, the off-season calendar, as we're you know, between Christmas and New Year's already. But, I mean, this is just a fraction, a small fraction of, of the players on the market have have signed or, or been traded at this point. So we're you know, we're going to stay very open-minded and continue to look for ways to get better uh, for 2021, but also in, in um, you know, just to be consistent with our vision of kind of a long-term plan here so you know players that fit for us uh, short term but but also long term uh, we're going to be very open minded to continue to look at areas to improve there thank you very much guys okay and the last question is from Hiroki Toda of Asai Shimbun yes thank you John uh, I hope everyone can hear me uh... go ahead yes uh, this is a question to JD. Um, so um, I don't think you've seen him on live, but uh, when did he become a serious candidate? And, and maybe last year or two years before that, he, he became in a maybe a discussion for a potential uh, target. Yeah. So you know, I've never I have never seen Kohei pitch live, um, uh, like. You know, we have several people who who have uh, Joe and, and Haji, uh, Josh Boyd, and, and some of our other uh, pro scouts that have been over to Japan in, in years past. Um, but we weren't you know, weren't able to go out there this year. I think our history, as Joe mentioned, goes back to high school. Uh, or you know, Joe and, and Jim Colburn at the time went and visited him and, and uh, have seen him. And then. Uh, over the years, we have a number of different reports in on him um, with our interest really peaking in, in 2019 when he had a bit of a breakthrough season. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, with an idea that, you know, there was a possibility he could be posted, um, probably became more on our radar at that point from kind of a long-term planning standpoint. And then as we got to this off season and we were evaluating the, the starting pitching options, uh, he was, you know, talked about a, a fair amount at that point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a couple of other announcements, but uh, first, uh, we want to take this opportunity on what is probably going to be his last Zoom call to recognize T.R. Sullivan for his 32 years of coverage of the Rangers, the longest standing beat writer in club history. Uh, it's been quite a ride, and we really do appreciate everything. I know he, a lot of people have expressed these accolades, and I think on this call, especially with all the Japanese writers he, he helped over the years, having them on the call uh, is very meaningful. And uh, we're going to miss him. We wish him the best in retirement. I know Woody and JD have a couple of things they'd like to say, so I'll turn it over to Woody. Sorry, it took me a while there. Um, TR, I just, I, I want to speak on behalf of the uh, entire organization. 32 years is a long time, man. And, um, you know, obviously I've only known you for a few years, but, 
you know, your reputation, your reputation precedes you. It's, uh, you know, you've done a lot of great things for this organization. You're, you're basically part of the Texas Rangers family. And um, I just want to thank you personally. Like I know, like I said, it's only been a couple, um, but I know you've given me some nuggets over the last couple of years that really helped. Um, you were always honest. Um, you always, you know, wrote an honest article. Um, and I think that's what, uh, that's what we all admire, obviously, in that business. It's hard. And um, for 32 years, man, it's a, it's a heck of a career. And uh, congratulations. And I think it's it's very uh, fitting that the last that the last comment needs to be made to the longest standing beat writer from the longest reigning GM in franchise history, JD. Go ahead. Yeah, you're making me feel old like TR there, John. <laughs> um, no, TR, I just you know just want to uh, really thank you and then and recognize a few things about you that that have stood out. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people. Uh, I think take for granted that the industry that we work in. Uh, I think I, you know, I probably do it sometimes too. And I think we all got into it because we love the game. We love baseball. Uh, what stood out to me about UTR and, and, you know, I've known you now for about 20 years or so is I don't think you've ever lost that. You know, you, you're, you genuinely love the game. You love baseball, uh, the people in the game, the characters. Um, and while it's first for a lot of people it becomes a business, I, I can say watching you work, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that it, your love for the game itself has never wavered. And uh, I find that, you know, very, very impressive. Uh, you know, obviously in, in our roles, there are times where, you know, where, where uh, our interests don't necessarily align, but I appreciate how you always handle things professionally. You were never looking for, um, you know, to embarrass anybody or, or anything of that nature. Uh, you kind of live by a certain code on the job, which, which I find, uh, you know, very uh, 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 something to really take pride in. Uh, love the, the little holes in the wall around the the American League that uh, you know uh, throw a cold one back at you. You seem to know them all, all the right spots. And I also love how you uh, you know you take care of your interns and Jesse Sanchez and all the other people that have worked under you in the game have grown into you know major. Uh, 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 contributors in, in the baseball journalism industry. So I think it's a legacy for you to be proud of, man. So I wish you all the best for you and, and Helen and John. And on behalf of the Rangers, congratulations and good luck. I think TR has his hand raised. Did you want to say something, TR? Yeah, I'll make this quick. Um, you know, after 32 years, I did something. I, I've done it for the first time in my career, and that's write a story on Christmas Christmas Day. That was a first for me. So um anyway thank you everybody i'm i'm retiring i'm not disappearing i'll see you all i know everybody wants to get get to work here today and get this done but i really appreciate all the sentiments from mr woodward and john daniels and john blake and uh chris young best of luck to you and joe furukawa there was a reason why we selected you as the as our good guy and uh you continue to show that so thank you everybody and, uh merry christmas thanks john blake Okay, that will conclude our uh, Zoom call for this afternoon. Everybody have a great rest of your holiday, uh, and thank you again. And thanks, TR. Good luck.